In this video, we're going to be tackling a fairly typical and very easy interview question in Java, uh, which is surprisingly very commonly asked, uh, which is how do you reverse a string in Java? It's simple, but then it also uncovers some understanding about how strings work in Java, some of the APIs and all that stuff. So I think it's a good question to ask anyway. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be uh, discovering some of the ways in which you can reverse a string in Java. Uh, there are two approaches that I want to tackle. Uh, the first approach is using something called a string builder and uh, using the reverse API of it. So Java has a reverse API for strings, and you can do that using the string builder. Um, that could answer the question, but that may not be what the interviewer wants. Maybe the interviewer wants you to reverse the string manually and not use an existing API. So that's going to be the second approach that we're going to tackle. Uh, when you're asked this in an interview, what I'd recommend you do is uh, ask the interviewer if uh, using a string builder reverse API is OK. Uh, if they say no, they are expecting you to do it manually, then you go with the second approach. Uh, but at least asking that question is going to let them know that you are aware of these two different ways of doing this. So we're going to start with uh, some writing some pseudo code about using the string builder to reverse using the reverse API and then manually reversing the string ourselves. Uh, if you are doing this in a real world environment, let's say you're on the job and you need to reverse a string, uh, it's very, very, very likely that you're going to be doing the string builder approach, which is the first approach because there is an API already available. The second approach is mostly for interview purposes. All right, so let's dig into the pseudo code. So let's say you have uh, a string here which is uh, str equals, let's say, hello. Now, you can do this using the string builder way, or you can do this manually. If you're doing it the string builder way, you would use the string builder class to create an instance out of the string. So you're going to get a new string builder out of the string that's passed to you. So String Builder is an API that's provided in Java, which lets you manipulate strings without having to create new instances of it. You see, the thing with strings in Java is that they're immutable. Immutable means when you make a change to an instance, you're not changing the instance in place. You're actually creating a new instance with the changes applied. And the old instance is essentially ignored or held on as a different reference. But basically, when you make a change, you never make a change in place. You always get a new instance out of it. So when you have a string, you want to make like three changes to it, right? So you want to add this character, remove this character, whatever else you want to do. So you essentially have resulted in three new instances of that string. And you just discard the old ones if you don't want to use it. So the more operations you perform on a string, the more instances you are ending up with as a result. Now, this can be inefficient if you're making a lot of operations. That's where String Builder comes in, and also another class called String Buffer. What these classes do is they kind of provide you with like a playing ground where you can convert a string instance to a String Builder instance, and then make all your changes on that same instance. And then when you're done and you're happy with the with the value of the string, then you create a string value out of it, right? So you're operating on a string builder instance and not on a string instance. So unlike a string instance, a string builder instance is mutable. So you can perform like 100 operations on the same instance. And when you're done, you say, okay, now I'm done with all my operations. Give me a string out of it. And then you get one string instance, which is more efficient as you might guess. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the string that we want to reverse and create a string builder instance out of it. Now, the advantage of doing this in our particular case is that the string builder instance has certain APIs, one of the API being reverse. So now that I have a string builder instance out of it, I'm going to call the dot reverse method, and then I'm going to do a to string, and now I have the reversed string. But then if I were to do it manually, things would be a little bit different. So let's say I have uh, the string here, all right? Now I have a bunch of characters. If I were to do things manually, what I would need to do is loop through this from this side to this side, and then get each character out, and then put it into another string, all right? So this one goes here, this one goes here. So you're gonna be going from back to front, and then inserting characters from front to back, all right? So this is one way to do it. But now here's a problem. Every time you insert something into a string, remember I told you about string being uh, immutable? You're essentially resulting in a new string here. So every time you insert a character, you get a new string, which we don't want to do. So instead of inserting to a string, you insert to a 
you guessed it, string builder. Get a string builder here and then insert in reverse order. And then once you're done with all your inserts, you're gonna get a string out of it, which is the final reverse string. So these are the two approaches that we're gonna be implementing. Let's see in code how that looks like. So I have this uh, uh, reverse string class, which is gonna contain a main method, which is gonna be our launching point for calling these two. Uh, I'm gonna create two methods for these two approaches. So this main method is gonna call those two methods. So I'm gonna create a string, call it hello world. And then uh, I'm going to call the first method, which is I'm gonna title the reverse with string builder, all right? So it's gonna take a string as an input argument, and then it's gonna return the reversed string. So I need to write this method. So let's say I write this definition, reverse with string builder. It's gonna take in a string, and then it's gonna return the reversed string. So what do I need to do here? I need to first create that string builder instance out of the string, which is what I'm going to use to manipulate the string. And then on the string builder instance, I'm going to call a reverse method. That's the advantage of using string builder in our case. It is going to reverse the contents of that string builder, whatever string it contains. And then when I do a dot two string out of this, it is going to be the reverse string. And that's it. This is all we have to do to get the string to be reversed. It's fairly simple. All right, now let's look at the other approach, which is the manual approach. So let's say I'm going to create a reverse manually method where I'm not gonna call the reverse method of string builder, but I'm still calling the string builder to manipulate the string. So here's gonna be the si signature of the reverse manually method. It's gonna take in a string instance and then it's going to return the reversed string. What am I gonna do first? First, I'm going to get a string builder instance to hold the reversed string. Now, I don't need to convert the existing string to a string builder instance because I'm just going to be reading characters off of it. I'm not manipulating the input string. So I don't need a string builder for that. But I need a string builder for the result string, which is gonna contain the letters in reversed order. And I don't wanna create a new string every time I insert a new character. So I'm gonna create a string builder to hold that reversed string. And now, I'm going to loop from the length of the string minus one, so it's gonna go from the last point all the way to uh, the beginning where i equals zero or i is until i equals zero so it has to include i equals zero as well and i'm going to do i minus minus so i'm going to look at all the characters from the back and i'm going to get the character by using str dot char at char at is going to take the index which is i and it's going to give me the character of the string at that particular point i'm going to take that and then append it to the string builder. We're gonna be using the append method of string builder, which lets you append a character or a string to it. And this is gonna be helpful because we're gonna be appending characters one by one, and then it's gonna go into the same string builder instance. Now once it's done, once I have looped through all the characters from end to beginning, and then I put it into that string builder instance, I'm going to call the toString method again. Now I have the string builder with the reverse string value. I need to make a string out of it and then return it back. So I'm gonna do that, and then we are done with the reverse manually method as well. So we have these two methods, which is going to return the reverse of hello world with two different approaches, both of them using string builder. All right, so I'm gonna to switch to my Eclipse window, which has the exact same code that we just saw. And we have uh, two calls. Let's run this and make sure they reverse the string properly and they do. So this is how you would reverse a string in an interview. Um, either of these approaches. If you're doing it in a real world scenario, again, like I said, you would just use the string builder's reverse method. Uh, there could be another uh, twist to this uh, question where the interviewer would ask, um, don't even use string builder, right? How would you do this without even using a string builder? Uh, you would still go with the second approach, which is reversing it manually, but instead of using a string builder to append the strings, you would just append strings directly, right? So it would be like string plus string plus string. So we are adding characters one by one. Uh, the disadvantage, like I mentioned, is that you're creating new string instances every time. So it's gonna result in a lot of objects being garbage collected by Java at some point. So if the interviewer mentions this caveat and then asks you to implement something without using the string builder, you can just append strings, but then make sure to let them know that this is horribly inefficient because you're resulting in so many wasted instances.